Have you ever considered starting your own website? If you want a good one, you're going to need a great web host. That's why I recommend Bluehost. And we have an exclusive offer for everyone who listens to the Adventuring the Girl Life podcast. You can get started with Bluehost for $3.95. They have impeccable customer service. They have a one-click automatic WordPress blog installation. You can't get any easier than that. And when you're ready for more than one website, there's no need to look for more hosting. Bluehost has got you covered. That's why I recommend Bluehost. And you can find this deal at www.jenwhitmoretraining.com under the resources tab or www.jenwhitmoretraining.com forward slash resources. Welcome to Adventuring the Girl Life, where we believe life for every girl should be well lived. Each week, we'll explore tips and techniques to add more adventure to your world, from fitness and self-care to career building and fulfillment, and even the most mundane parts of life. So buckle up. I'm your host, Jen Whitmore, certified personal trainer, mom of two, lover of calm days, and your new partner in adventure. Hey, hey, girls, welcome back to the podcast. This week, we are talking about resting well. I want to know if you're one of those people who actually rest well. I will tell you right now, I am not. I am not someone who rests well. I am a go, 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 do, do, do type of person. Alan actually teases me all the time. He tells me that I am an event-driven person because I'm always like, what are we going to do next? And what's happening after that? And then where are we going? And what's coming up after that? And so he's always joking me, but the truth of the matter is that's how it is. I like to do stuff. I don't enjoy Saturdays where there is literally nothing to do. If there's literally nothing to do, then I want to go to the beach or I want to go to the mall or I want to go to the pool or I want to invite friends over. I don't like having nothing to do. That doesn't sound fun to me at all. But sometimes we have to take breaks and we have to learn how to rest because if we don't, bad things can happen. When we don't rest... Our immune system becomes compromised. We can't focus. We get overtired. We make mistakes. We're more likely to get sick. We're a lot grouchier for sure. Grouchier? More grouchy? I don't know. Anyway, we need to learn how to rest well. Now, I'm not talking just about sleep. We can do a whole nother episode on all the ways that we can get better sleep. But today we're talking about just resting, just taking a break. So how are some of the ways that we rest well? Like I said, I'm not good at these. So as I go down the list of these seven things that we do to rest, I know all of you already know them. This will not be new information for you. But we're going to go over it anyway because, you know, sometimes we all need a little outside help, including me. Now, let's talk about the actual dictionary definition of rest. It is a bodily state characterized by minimal, functional, and metabolic activities. This means you ain't doing nothing, sister. This means relaxing, taking a break resting, putting pause on all of the many activities that we have going on on a regular daily basis. Now, number one on this list is going to sound a little counterintuitive, but you know it well. Exercise. We have to exercise to be able to rest. Otherwise, we get all of this pent-up energy We need to sweat out all of the toxins. We need to get our blood flowing through our body so that all of our processing is functioning properly. And then that way, we strengthen our muscles. We strengthen our heart. We do all of these positive things for our body if we exercise and then in turn can rest afterwards. 
I know this is not new information, girls. Number two, we have to start avoiding blue light electronics. It messes with us, people. It's not something that I always think about or even take seriously. The only time that I actually start to take this seriously is when I am under the anxiety attacks, okay? Thank goodness these don't happen to me as often anymore because I have learned some of the techniques to combat them. But when they do, I am very mindful of the blue light electronics that we are literally in front of all the time. Sometimes we just need to take breaks to rest. I don't know if your days look like mine, but when I wake up in the morning, I have to turn off my electronic watch because it has my alarm on it. Then I pick up my electronic blue light phone to check to see if anything has happened while I've been asleep. Then I go take my kid to school. And while I'm taking my kid to school in the parent line, I'm checking out what's going on for the day, what the weather's like, what I have on my schedule. And then when I get home and wait to take the other kid to school, there's a 45-minute gap there where, again, I'm probably using my phone. After that, I go to the gym. And again, I use my phone, oh wait, and my watch at the same time because I monitor my exercise. And sometimes I watch the TV at the gym if I'm on the treadmill. Then... I come home, shower, listen to a podcast again with my phone. Then I sit down to my computer for hours to work. And I'm using my computer and usually my phone together. Then after that, I have to do dinner. You know, the kids come home, all this stuff is happening. But the recipe for dinner is on my phone. Plus, I'm still checking social media. After that, I sit down and watch TV for a few hours with my husband. And then after that, we go upstairs and lay in the bed and play with our phones some more. So I don't know if your day looks like mine, but I literally have my phone attached to my face. Now, I know that's not how it's supposed to be, but hello, that's how it is. We have the internet in our pocket. And let me just tell you, it beckons all the time. So how do we actually avoid some of these blue light electronics? so that we can rest well. Well, cutting the TV off before bedtime, at least an hour or two is helpful. If you change the saturation on your phone, it can actually help. So in advance, I'm sorry, Android people, but I am an iPhone person. So if you go to the settings on your iPhone, you can go to display and brightness, and then you can click on night shift. And you can actually set your phone to automatically shift the colors um, from less warm to more warm, and you can set them from sunset to sunrise. So it will automatically adjust for you at those times. You also can buy blue light glasses. Now, I don't have any of these personally. I have a couple of friends who have them, who've tried them, who love them. But again, it's just another option. What we're trying to do here is become aware. Just like our diet, there's, we're just making ourselves aware so that we can think about it more often and be more conscious. Okay, moving on to number three. Take a bath. Oh my gosh, do you know how good that feels after you've had a long day and you really worked out really hard because you went to this new hit class and it was really hard and your legs are really tired and you really just need to take a break. And so you go upstairs and sit in a bathtub and you fill it up to literally the hottest temperature that your body can stand. You pour in the Epsom salts and the essential oils and sometimes the bentonite clay and you rest in the bathtub. Oh my gosh, that feels so good. 30 minutes and you are totally rejuvenated. Am I right, girls? Okay, number four, use aromatherapy. Now, aromatherapy isn't really our buzzword now. It's essential oils and the diffuser. Those are our buzzwords, but they're the same thing. Now, whether you use it with candles, essential oils, or incense, I prefer the essential oils because of the health factor. Candles are not healthy, in case you're wondering. 
These techniques are fantastic. We have this smell and mind connection where certain smells can actually help us to relax. There's lots and lots of information on this out there if you are curious. And if you want me to do an episode on it, I totally can. Just keep me posted. But aromatherapy is a fantastic way for us to take a break and rest. Number five, meditation. I know I've talked about this with you before, and sometimes we associate meditation with a little bit more of the woo-woo type of stuff, which is not what we are about here. But meditation can actually bring you back to focus, bring you back to center. It can help you stand outside of whatever you have going on in your life at the time and just stare at it like words on a wall or clouds floating by. And if you don't like what's in that cloud, girl, take out your big, huge pin and pop it. You don't have to internalize this stuff. Meditating can help you step outside to focus on what's important and to unfocus on what's not important. You can use it with mantras. You can use it as a prayer time. But it's just a fantastic way for us to sit down in some quiet and unplug, de-stress, relax. I love meditation. And no, it's not always easy, but that's why it's called a practice. You know, you practice these things so that we can get better. And resting is absolutely something that we need more practice of. Number six, taking breaks on the micro level and on the macro level. Let's dive right into this just for a minute here. Macro level breaks we think more about like weekends or taking vacations. And there are actually terrible, terrible statistics about how many Americans don't even take their vacations. People, we need rest. I can vouch for that, that sometimes we are the people that didn't take vacations in the past. And that was more for money reasons. You know, it's not always easy to get away for a vacation. But if you have the vacation time, you still need to take it. Even if you don't go anywhere, you just need to relax and unplug. And the weekends, a lot of times our work and our parenting responsibilities roll over into the weekends. And then we have to start back up again on Monday and we didn't really get that rest time. So these are the macro level breaks that we need to start taking. Take your weekends and rest. Take your vacation. Use your time. Now, micro level breaks. We've heard all All of us, I'm sure, have heard about the 15 minutes. You know, take a break every 15 minutes to rest your eyes, stand up and stretch. How many of us actually do this? Yeah, I didn't think so. I'm not one of those people either, especially when I'm in the middle of planning something. Like, hello, this podcast right now. I'm not stopping this podcast right now in the middle of me speaking to you to take a break. Uh Uh-uh, that's not happening, especially when I'm writing, too. If you're a writer, an author, or even if you're like me, I write emails to my girls every week. I'm not going to take a break, especially when I'm in the middle of a flow. That ain't happening, sister. I ain't got time for that. But we still need to be conscious and aware of taking these breaks. Even if your break is absolutely nothing more than getting up to go to the bathroom, That is a break. But, hey, don't take your phone because you need a break. That's the point. You have to unplug, decompress a little bit every once in a while to keep yourself healthy and functional. Resting is not something that we all do well sometimes, but we need to. Because, again, bad things happen when we don't rest. Okay, last one. Number seven. Get the correct amount of sleep every night. Like I said, we can do a whole nother episode on sleep techniques and all the things that we can do to get better sleep. But just for the sake of rest in today's episode, you need to get the correct amount of sleep to, again, function well. When you get too much sleep, 
you feel gross. Am I right? Like you sleep too long, you wake up and you feel overtired and then you end up going back to sleep, which makes you feel even worse. And now half the day is gone and you're not up. You haven't showered. You haven't eaten. You haven't hydrated. And you're just like, uh, bleh. I know it's yucky. I don't like to oversleep. But we also need to make sure that we're getting the right amount of sleep. Now, I know that all of us have heard like that standard eight hours but I don't really think that that's true. That's just the average of whatever study was done forever and ever ago that says eight hours. You have to think about your age. Also, what you're going through currently in life. Also, what works for your body. I know people that function on six hours of sleep. I know people that function on nine hours of sleep. It just depends on where you fall. Obviously, the average is eight. I'm one of those people that like seven hours and then sometimes nine hours, depending on what's going on. So whatever works for you, just get the correct amount. And if this is hard for you, maybe a technique you could apply would be to set a bedtime alarm. I know you're not a child. I personally don't like bedtimes either. But when you're staying up watching TV that has no effect on your life whatsoever, You're wasting that precious time of rest. Your body needs it. Your body wants it. It makes you feel good. So maybe set a bedtime alarm. 10 o'clock, that's when we're going to bed. No matter whether the show is over or not, 10 o'clock. Whatever your bedtime is, you pick it for yourself. But I hope that these tips have helped you today, girls. Seven ways to get better rest so that we can be better, happier, well-functioning people. And moms, because Lord knows those little stinkers take it out of us sometimes, right? Now coming up, we have our crown and our flop. All right, girls, major, major flop this week. And I would say it's my fault, but sorta second party fault, if that's how you want to put it. I totally got robbed. Yep, it has officially happened. I have been robbed. So I actually live in a great neighborhood, but there are some delinquents here and there. And apparently, apparently so, because I got robbed. Okay, yeah, I said it. Robbed. Are you hearing me? Someone upset about it. Can you tell? So I'm not sure if I locked my car or not, which is something that I always do. But, you know, people make mistakes, so it's totally possible that I didn't lock my car and I just don't remember. I come out the next morning. Alan has already cranked my car, so he's, like, been in my car. And I'm guessing he just didn't notice, like he was in a hurry. But I sit down in my driver's seat, and I'm like... Why is my glove compartment open? Did my purse fall over? Like, why is my purse strewn everywhere? Like, why is all my stuff in? Oh, my gosh. Like, it literally hits me like a ton of bricks. Someone has gotten into my car. They have gone through everything that is in there, which if you're like me, I live in my car. And they stole all my money. Oh my gosh, they stole all my cash. They took all my cash. They probably made out with like 80 bucks. I was so pissed. But lesson learned, don't leave your crap in your car and hey, lock your car at night. So that was my flop for the week. And like I said, maybe second party because someone stole from me, but I may have not locked my car and I may have left my purse in my car. So anyways, moving on. Okay, crowning moment of the week. I am going to let you girls in a little deep into my personal life today. And I'm doing it because I want this podcast to help people. Like this is the reason that I produce this podcast. So if I cannot be vulnerable with you in my own life, then what's the point? So I had, am having an anxiety flare currently, and the crowning moment is that I didn't 
sit with it. Um, I've told you before that this is something that I struggle with. Um, I have learned a lot of techniques to combat it. And one of the techniques is medication. And if you've listened to any of my previous episodes on this subject, I don't like meds. You know I don't like them. I don't like to take them. I don't like to be reliant on them. I do not want them. I am not a fan. Um, But sometimes crap happens, okay? The end. Crap happens. So this time, I don't know what caused it, but I do know that it was, you know, right around that monthly time. Um, I also wasn't sleeping well a couple of days before, and that's kind of the reason for our subject today. But I flared up and I couldn't get out from under it like the first day wasn't good. And so I immediately started working on it. I immediately grabbed um, my medication out of the place that I keep it hidden away from my own eyes. And I reached out to two friends who were very, very gracious and helpful and kind. They prayed for me. They sent me um, great Bible verses and devotionals. They asked me how I was doing. They took an interest and they cared. And it makes a big difference. I've also been meditating and also tapping Um, doing, I mean, I know some of that stuff sounds like super weird, but these are the things that I have learned. Um, breathing techniques is another one. These are things that I've learned that help me through these situations. And it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating to be underneath something that you can't get out from under, you know, that you're stuck under. And even though I know that that light at the end of the tunnel is there, when you're in it, you're in it and it sucks. But the crowning moment is that I didn't sit with it. I immediately started combating. I immediately put on my warrior outfit and started combat. I, like I said, reached out to a friend. I started, I started working on the issue. And that is the crowning moment. Because sometimes when stuff like this happens, we get so far underneath, we get stuck. And we stay there for a long time. And it's not good for us. It helps no one, especially not us. And so if this is something that you are familiar with, Um, either personally or someone in your life, help them. Again, the crowning moment is that I didn't wait and it helps. It helps when you get on top of it quickly. So even though my crowning moment this week isn't necessarily super happy, it is very productive. And so I hope that everything in this episode has helped you girls in some way And if you could share it with someone that you know who may be struggling to be a well-rested person, then that would just help us reach more girls with our everyday adventures. So, until next week, girls. Adventure on!